You can see that there, the, the, oh, the kind of blacker hoof. Right. That's the excess horn, we've got to cut that off. You see, that's yeah. how so much... Is that like a human toenail then? Yeah, basically, it's like right. the white bit of your finger nail. Right. Like. And it's, what is the V thing? This here? Yeah. That's a frog. The frog? The frog, <laughs> that's what we call it, the frog. Yeah. It's yeah. made up of the same tissue as the, as the hoof, but there's more moisture in it, so it's rubbery. Right. You can see it moving there, yeah. and that's like a, a pad, a cushion, uh -huh. when they're walking, you see? Yeah, and that absorbs all the shock they get when they're moving. Yeah. But that's softer than the, obviously, here. Right. This little knife's called a searcher. You can see the difference between yeah. the three of them. That's just made for making little holes for a specific uh -huh. thing. Working shoe for a Clydesdale. It's a very, very heavy shoe. That's a driving shoe. You see, like, so this shoe here, it's got a groove in it all the way around. And the driving shoe, there's just a, a flat bar just the nails punched in. So that'll be used for road work only. They'll last a lot longer, because uh -huh. they're on the road all the time. That would be your milk horses, coal horses, stuff like that, you see. And this is just a little pony shoe. You see? Uh, they get uh, ailments with their feet, obviously. They can get abscesses in their feet. Okay, if they've got a stone or something stuck in the, in the sole, you take the stone out, but if it gets infected, more often than not, a farrier's always called to a lame horse first, and he'll take the shoe off properly. Find the abscess, he'll dig it out. I mean, it's not the safest job in the world to do. You can feel a live animal. Handling the different bits of the world. Ah, it's a large animal, but long legs and you pop metal and you have to watch what you're doing but it could be safer things it gets a bit hectic in the summer if they're doing the common rides every week they're going to wear the shoes out quicker right so they need shorts quicker right in this area running about peebles and the selkirk quite jedra there's about seven but we're all self-employed. Yeah, a couple yeah. of them got apprentices. Uh, You're not tempted to take on an apprentice? I probably will. I'm still quite keen and able at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've seven years to cover the borders and that keeps things ticking over. Years ago, it was, it was a dying trade, really. But I'm saying the last ten years or so, it's come back years ago in people. There's been hardly any private loan horses, but now they're... Mm. It's more popular now. There's a lot of lads that are off for good intentions, but it is a hard job. Four and a half years in the apprenticeship. You can go on to do further training and you can do like go into like remedial shoe and stuff like that. Once you filter out the ones that are going to be able to do it. All the farriers in Britain now are registered to the, the worshipful company of farriers under the Registration Council. And every every farrier that shoes a horse in Britain must be on the register, you see. And that's the diploma and the worshipable company farrier. Because it's quite physically demanding. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not a job, it's just a way of living. You know what I mean? It's not a nine to five. You're dealing with animals and stuff like that.